What's going on everybody? Toby Wan Shinobi here. I'm back again with another Under the Hood video for you. This is a solos gameplay. Uh, I play very aggressive in this gameplay. The end game of this gets pretty crazy, but uh, the focus of this video, or at least what I'm trying to do, is show you kind of the flow of consciousness, what I'm thinking in my head as the action gets intense, you know, as I'm in combat. I'm not necessarily trying to give you the best strategy for winning a Fortnite zero build game. I am trying to teach you how to handle action and combat well in a game of Fortnite zero build. So again, the focus here is moment to moment actions and taking good engagements against opponents, not necessarily like rotating well or playing safe or, you know, fighting for that number one victory royale. You know, I'm, I'm going for high limbs this game and uh, I think it's going to help a lot of you because in order to get consistent wins in Fortnite zero build, you have to be a player that can get high elimination you have to be comfortable in combat and in action because at the end of the game you're gonna end up in a small circle with three or four players and you're gonna have to start getting eliminations you cannot hide the entire time and just count on someone being hurt and you sneaking up on them so uh, I hope this video helps let me know if you have any questions in the comments below I am happy to help you out I would try to respond to every single comment all right let's jump into it Dropping off the bus here, looking for a place to drop. Now we're gonna go the last third of the bus because that's usually busy. Again, last half of this bus line right here is always gonna be pretty much where most players are dropping. You usually do not drop on the first third. So we're dropping on the last third, hoping to find uh, some enemies. And we're gonna go to Frenzy. Frenzy Fields is always pretty darn busy uh, consistently, unless it's way out of the way of the bus. If it's on the bus line, it's usually got a lot of action, so. Uh, we'll be dropping there and seeing if we can find some good fights. So I'm aiming for the yellow house, I think. Probably. That's usually where I go. Or I go over to this building to the right, which usually has ODM gear. Uh, I'd say 75% of the time this white building over here has ODM gear. Looks like I haven't made up my mind yet because I'm looking at gliders. So I see gliders coming left to the yellow building. So I'm thinking, okay, let's drop into a slide right here. Notice that we are using um, our slide to keep our momentum and get us across quickly. Gonna grab weapons first. I hear the ODM gear, but I wanna get weapons. I probably shouldn't have broke those, to be honest. Probably could have found some minis first or something. Possibly. Okay, no minis. Uh, maybe the ODM is not there. Let's take another look at that. Yeah, maybe it's not here. I'm not doing a good job of searching, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, I myself don't even know right now if it's if it's there or not. Usually it's like against one of these walls. I think it's not here. So yeah, no no mobility. So we're just looting up. And, uh, we're gonna carry shields instead of another SMG. It just makes more sense. Since we don't have mobility, uh, we're gonna carry two health. Again, looking for a better AR would be ideal. I probably should check that chest, but I kind of want to just get in the fights. Sometimes you can just finish people off. Havoc's not that bad at mid-range like this, so I'm kind of... Because I have this car, again, I'm always driving vehicles. <laughs> you guys probably are picking this up now. Always be driving vehicles. If you have a vehicle available, just get in it. It's great mobility and cover. And I'm going to use it to push this guy right here while still being in cover. So, see, I'm doing a head glitch right here. And that guy got wrecked. I'm not sure if that was a real player or not, but either way... Didn't take any damage because we were using the car. I'm gonna go grab this guy's red eye. Probably should have grabbed that AR ammo, but I think I want this guy off the roof as quickly as possible. See if we can get a tag on him. Nothing yet. We're gonna play this bush because it's pretty safe. Until we see somebody, I think we're just gonna... <clears throat> oh. No, nope, we're going to the car, which is also a great move. Like, if we just want to get eliminations, let's just keep moving. Get a new angle now we're in this car and people are gonna be like there's a car you know everyone's gonna be starting to focus on me and the one of the great things about playing solos and being in a car is that somebody will start shooting you it's like really hard to resist to shoot the car because it's just like an obvious thing to shoot right but then they're gonna get third partied almost every time because they're gonna start making noise it's gonna take way too long to blow this car up and i'll still be pretty safe unless they have like two sniper shots on me so I blew up my bush right there. I didn't mean to. So I'm going to stay in the car. I'm going to get some range on this guy because he looks like he's in like a pistol. I have a red eye and I know my aim is pretty good at long range. So I'm going to use this cover of the car to my advantage. This guy is using terrible positioning. Maybe he has enemies behind him. And if he does, he should not be taking this fight. So bad move on his part. 
and he pays the price. I see another fight going off. Too late to steal a kill, but I'm gonna watch. A decent damage on him. Now we get it sniped from the right right here. Instantly get back in the car. We do know that he has to reload his sniper. And we're pretty low on health here. If he hits a, our car with another snipe shot, it's blowing up. Apart from that, though, we're okay. So I'm just going to stay in the car for a little bit. I'm looking to finish off John Wick here. I see him go over here. And what I'm going to do is probably use an exit right here and take a quick pump shot and then jump back in the car after I shoot. We finished him off in one shot. Notice how, um, as I exited the car, I was using good uh, crosshair positioning here. So like I see him and s I'm like, instantly start looking up towards his head. I'm lining up the shot as I come out of the car. So that's just something that you naturally learn to do. Uh, you know, playing lots of first person shooters, you just learn good uh, screen positioning. Even though I didn't have a reticle, I can tell that that's kind of center of screen. And I was just bringing it onto him as I was exiting. So now I'm looking for that sniper because I'm pretty sure I got shot from over there. I decided that I need to move because they might begin an angle and I want to get back to nearly full shields. So I'm just drink this pot up in this little shack. No one can hit me right here. I'm feeling safe. Oh, and look at that, ODM gear. All right, so we're gonna get this ODM gear, which is fantastic. Always gotta have mobility and zero builds, guys. I've said it, I'll say it again. Mobility and zero build is just as important as builds are in build mode. And that's not even an exaggeration. <laughs> you just gotta have mobility in zero build mode. So that person's out in the middle. It's obviously an AI. I'm just gonna finish him off real quick. I don't think that was the player that took a shot at me because the shot that was taken at me was probably a real player. It was a good shot and they were concealing their location. So I know it was a real player. I hear a snipe go off here. I see this person right here and I'm gonna instantly start putting damage on them. I know that they're on a reload with their sniper so they can't headshot me right now. I'm gonna try to do as much damage as possible. So they finished the reload. Uh, they did not land that shot, thankfully. But notice I am using a head glitch. It would be very hard to hit the shot. I am strafing, I'm not standing still. Just a good use of cover, good use of movement against a sniper. We got 123 damage on him, so that's a push for sure. If you get him over 100 damage, you should always be pushing as long as it's safe. I'm thinking this area is generally safe. We've eliminated three, four players now, so shouldn't be many players left here. I whiffed that shot, but I used good mobility to finish the fight. So I've said this, uh, and I'll say it again. Sometimes using mobility is not always ideal. Like I probably could have landed on this roof, right? And just lined up the shot. This guy's not even looking at me. <laughs> it's pretty bad. I could have just not jumped right here. When I swing down here, I probably shouldn't have jumped. Just land feet on the ground. Take the nice, easy pump shot. I've lined it up really nice, but there's a delay in the pullout when you land, and that's what gets me a lot of the times. So I'm delayed on the shot, and I miss. Could have just landed and taken the shot nice and easy and probably finished this fight faster. Luckily, he does not pump me here. He just isn't ready for it. But yeah, notice that I am using good movement. After I miss my first shot, I want to get mobile again, so it's not an easy shot for him to hit. So as soon as I land, I'm going to start sprint jumping off this peak, break his camera. He's looking here, but I'm pretty far, far above him. He's trying to catch up to me, and then uh, just switch to the SMG and spam down. Makes that engagement pretty easy. He could have played better, for sure. Um, but I think no matter what, I win that fight as long as I land most of my shots. All right, gunshots to the east now. Uh, I'd like to find some more heals would be ideal, better loot. So as I'm approaching this, in my mind, listen. So that's a lot of gunfire. I'm pretty darn good at telling what's a bot and what's not. If you hear prolonged gunfire, just spraying like that, that's usually a bot. They're trying to spray people through walls and stuff. It's just, I don't know. You can just tell it's a bot. The way this guy's moving is also kind of suspect. Either way, I'm gonna try to play these guys as if they're not. The way that this guy isn't pushing, this guy's, I don't know. They're just, look, it just kind of spells out AI for me. But I enter into a slide. And we're staying mobile, using good movement there. So as you see right here, I come in sliding, which makes it hard for the person behind me to hit. And I'm coming right at this person. Now I jump at the end of my slide, line up the shot, pull the trigger, nice and easy, 110. Now I'm doing a quick camera break where I sprint, jump, shoot down. I'm gonna do the exact same thing because I don't want her tagging me right here, which she should have. 
but it's it's an AI. So another 120. Got straight above her and just domed her. Okay, I know it seems silly to be using this much movement against bots is crazy, but I really, really encourage it because it's going to make your movement against real players a lot better. So basically, like anytime you play against AI or bots, you should be trying to use as much movement as possible. They're already very easy to kill and you should be practicing movement when you kill them because that'll make you a better player uh, in the next fight you go on into. It's just going to warm up your movement. It's going to warm up your aim. Just try to kind of increase that difficulty for yourself and then challenge yourself to use some good movement, hit some nice shots on these uh, AI as if they're real players. So I'm going to head. I'm gonna go ahead and crouch shot here. I'm gonna slide, I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna sprint jump. Just generally be a hard target to hit, even though I'm fighting AI. So yeah, that's just a quick lesson for you guys. I think I said that in my movement video, but always just try to practice movement. Try to practice whatever you can against AI. You know, it's just a nice, safe time to practice that kind of stuff. All right, so now we're carrying two splashes. I'm looking for some more splashes. Didn't get it, so I'm gonna get the slap juices uh, and stack some slaps. Uh, slap juices have a lot of utility because they allow you to have infinite sprint. And, uh, you know, they heal decent, 15... 15 HP each, so, you know, they're not bad. And they can get you above 50 shields, which is nice. They're not quite as fast at healing as uh, minis, but again, the utility of them and the fact that you can get above 50 shields um, makes them very useful. So now I'm just scouting, looking for any players. You notice that I took this wind tunnel here. A lot of time these peaks, in this area, there's like quite a few spots that have these like... I don't know what you call these little vortexes, little wind vortex. Sometimes they're active, sometimes they're not. I haven't figured that out myself. Maybe you can respond in the comments if you know what's going on, but this time it's active, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that to glide in to get on top of a building uh, easily. All right, so now we're here. Uh, we get Tracker's Armory, which is great for being on top of this building, because now I wanna just shoot some flares. Well, that was a kind of a surprising interaction there. I've never seen that. And I'm just kind of shooting at every angle, trying to find someone right above me. I heard someone, yep, so someone's swinging right there. I heard swing, swinging. I didn't see him, but yeah, now I do. We hit him out of his thing. I'm going to go back and grab my gun. I generally don't recommend carrying the flare gun. Um, I like to keep it in the back pocket, especially in ranked. If you can keep that augment up so that you can use it when you need it. If you get pressed in a hard fight, you can always pull it out, pull that flare gun out, mark your enemies, and you have a much easier fight. But I generally won't carry it over mobility or heals or even a weapon. It's kind of like just not that valuable. I'd rather have guns or heals or mobility. You can always come back and grab the flare gun if you need it, you know. Um, but, you know, we're playing solos. It's not ranked or anything. I'm not too worried about it. I just want to find people to eliminate. So this guy gets on the grind rail, um, gets away from me. I'm just kind of like generally staying mobile, just looking for people. Notice I'm never standing still because when you're in Mega City like this, there's a very high chance of getting headshot sniped if you stand still. <laughs> people love to get on top of these buildings and just like watch you and wait for you to stop moving. So I'm not going to give them that chance. We're just gonna keep moving. I think right now I'm on stream probably reading some stuff, I think. Generally when you see me like running into walls or staying in buildings, I'm usually reading chat. Okay, so I see some gunfire going off in the west. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, notice when I'm swinging through Mega City here, I'm trying to stay over top of these grind rails because if someone shoots me out, I can still land on a grind rail. Um, it's kind of risky. But at the same time, I'm like aiming kind of towards grind rails, right? So that like, if I get shot out, I can land on one. Right here, I could not, so I'm probably dead. Now I see this guy healing, which tells me he was hurt. I see some loot here, so a fight must have just finished. So I'm thinking I can probably just land on this guy and uh, do some damage to him. I kind of forgot there that I have a, a shadow tracker as my secondary. And shadow tracker is just really not that good as a spray weapon. 
I was actually trying to hold it down and spray right there, and I forgot that it's a shadow tracker. You can't do that. But luckily, that guy did not take the fight and just tried to run. Not a great play by him. He should have been carrying mobility to begin with and using it to get out of there. So the mistake that that guy made was killing someone and then not moving to cover before he healed. He just started healing out in the open, which in my opinion was not the move, especially if he has no mobility. It's one thing to heal out in the open with mobility when you can get away after getting shot at versus healing out in the open with no mobility, <laughs> you know? Not the smartest move. All right, so now we're just, again, swinging through Mega City. We're gonna probably go kill this boss here. Um, we're gonna try to make it as quick as possible. A lot of times it's just best to play range on the boss because, yeah, it's just way more effective. You're not gonna get third party as easily. You're not gonna get sprayed by their SMGs super hard, which can absolutely melt you. So just try to play range if you can. Uh, and see footsteps right here, and I'm not sure if that's a real player or not. I'm gonna drop off this, and I'm gonna use a mantle to avoid fall damage. I just happen to know that that little uh, window was there. So I'm playing aggressive here. I'm just knocking out that floor, trying to get rid of that person as quickly as possible. And, you know, there's a 50% chance that it was the AI. Uh, I just didn't like them in my vicinity. Right here, I just dropped my shotgun. Looks like we're going back for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good call. So never, ever, ever drop your shotgun. Pretty much ever. Drop pretty much any other weapon but your shotgun. Like, assault rifle and shotgun is really what you need at all times. You can drop an SMG, you can run a two-gun loadout, but not your shotgun. It's just too important to do heavy damage, peak shot heavy damage quickly. Uh, and notice, I didn't want anyone camping this vault on me. If I didn't have a shotgun and somebody was here, I'd be probably dead. Just, you know, with a shadow tracker pistol, there's no chance I win. So I'm not going to drop my shotgun when I push vault because there might be a rat hiding. Now I see some gunshots going on over here. And as I open this vault, you know, a lot of players will be looking to third party the vault or rat, rat out and kill the person that's opening the vault. So what I want to do is just put as much damage as possible on this guy so that he does not push me when I'm in this vault. Because this is, you know, a contained space and he could take advantage of that on me. You know, I could even get in a bad situation where I have to fight one person and then another person comes in and I'm just low on heals and that sort of thing. Uh, this gives me a little more time to loot and yeah. I'm in storm right now. I want to hit the floor out here. I guess this vault doesn't do that. I guess you can't hit the floor out on the Mega City vault. They updated the game so that you can with a lot of the vaults, but maybe not this one. That's enough looting. Uh, I don't have a lot of mobility anymore, and I'm kind of thinking we should find some. I know this guy went this way, and I kind of want to find him. Do a quick spin around to see if he's hiding edge of storm. There's a weird pile of loot there. Looks like someone died. Checking this bush. When you see bushes, guys, and they're near you, you want to check them and you want to be like really vigilant when you do it. Like slide into them, jump into them, avoid just straight line walking up to a bush because someone's going to be aiming down sights and they'll take your head off. I saw someone swing over here to the right. So I'm going to start looking that way probably. I'm trying to save my mobility right now because I'm really low. Otherwise, I would just be swinging everywhere. I'm going to hit the floor out right here and hit all three barrels at once. I think I've covered that in other videos, but if you haven't seen them, you can always hit the floor out instead of hitting the barrels and chests individually. Okay, we got a guy swinging up high. This is very dangerous for him. I'm trying to track him here. And uh, we, we calculate his trajectory pretty well right there. Shadow Tracker is not the best at long range like this. I generally actually don't carry this gun very often because of its inaccuracy at range like this and its inaccuracy at hip rate, hip fire. It's just great for marking people, but generally it's not the best gun unless you're like crouched down, you know, taking easy shots at someone and just wanting to mark them. So we got a nice shot on that guy. He's not living through that unless he lands in the water. We're gonna go see if we can get his mobility now. Oh, and he has some slurps. Great. So whenever you get slurps, you're in the storm. Even like whenever you kill a player who has extra slurps and you're going to be at two anyway, just drink the slurp and then leave. 
just have it going so that as you come out of that fight, you can be healing in case someone's shooting you. Never let a slurp go wasted. So I'm looking at this cache right here. I'm going to swap out, swap out that shadow tracker for the SMG because again, gold SMG is just gold twin mag is maybe the best secondary cleanup weapon possible. Mythic pistol is pretty darn good too, but the, like, the gold SMG is just such a good, at least in this meta right now, when there's no kinetic blades, everyone's swinging with their spider swingers. And this might be late. I don't know what the meta is going to be. Maybe kinetic blades will be back by the time this is back, this video is posted. But right now, everyone's swinging around in these ODM gear and spider webs. And being able to spray people with a twin mag is really effective versus a pistol. A pistol's kind of hard and it's not that accurate. Whereas a twin mag, you know, you have a lot more bullets going out, so you have a lot higher chance of hitting them. Even the original OG SMG is pretty good at stopping people from swinging at the higher rarities, at least. But pretty much I'll always take the gold twin mag over like any other secondary. All right, so we see this guy go across this hill right here. And we got some nice shots in his back. So we're going to go ahead and use this little hill to get high ground. I'm not sure if that guy was carrying mobility. It doesn't look like he, he was, but if he was, let's check his loot. Nope. What are you doing, guy? Oh my gosh. He gives us the best loot ever. Now we have an all gold loadout. <laughs> it's beautiful. But again, you cannot play zero build at a high level, at a competitive level in any extent, unless you have mobility, especially in solos. So yeah, just gonna say that again. All right, things get a little crazy here at the end of the game. I know that. Um, I remember this game. And this guy's dropping down here. Someone was shooting at him from the right, but he's looking like an easy kill right now. If I can get just eliminate this guy, it looks like he was running away. He might be hurt. Yep, he's healing. So he's right below me. Now, a lot of players might just jump down in the water and start shooting him, but that puts you at kind of a risk of getting pumped by him. He could actually even turn the fight around. Maybe he's full health. I don't know. Either way, it'd be way better to just stay on this railing, which I'm going to do. You have high ground. You have a nice, easy shot down on the back of his head. You know, it's shooting fish in a barrel, <laughs> literally. So we kill him and now we're in the water, which is okay because we see a guy coming and I want to use this to break line of sight. I'm going to reload my guns, and then I'm going to move so that I'm ready for the next fight. And I'm going to look back. Get some nice damage on him. 180 damage. That's a push for sure. So he's got a uh, legendary slurp going, so I need to be a little careful. I also see someone riding in over here. So notice I didn't drop down and try to finish that guy off because this guy's riding in and he's definitely coming after me for sure. If he see, if he hears that fight, probably coming after me. I'd rather just have this player live than drop down there because that's just a terrible spot to be. I'm going to maintain the high ground here. So he sees me. Gold SMG is just beastly. We hit him for 100 right there. And that's just an easy kill. That guy made a mistake of just staying on that rail. The rails are not that good to shoot from, guys. You should always jump off and use good cover. When you're on a rail, you're just out in the open. You're going to get shot as well as your accuracy. You're way less accurate when on the rails. So right now, I'm just going to reload my guns. And I'm going to use this little head peek. There's a little head glitch right here. This guy doesn't know where I am exactly. He knows I'm somewhere in this area, but he doesn't know exactly where I am. Now, something that I am starting to utilize more often is using my SMG before I use my shotgun. If I have the jump on someone, I'm going to start the engagement with my SMG. And there's a good reason for that. If you start the engagement with your SMG, they are not aware of your presence. And that means they're not going to be moving that sporadically or that crazy. And you all you have to do is just focus on lining up the shot and hitting your shots and you get a lot of damage early and then you can swap to your shotgun and then they're going to try to get mobile on you. With a shotgun, it's a lot easier to hit a mobile target. So that's why I'm trying to do that now. So that's just crazy damage right there. Nothing he could do unless he just was playing this better. He shouldn't have been like walking around these roofs so easily. He should have been jumping around and sliding and like, you know, but I just caught him off guard. So again, starting with that SMG made that fight so easy because all I had to do was hit him with one shotgun shot. And uh, when he was running, it was just such an easy target. So now I'm going to play this roof again. I want to make them make the mistake, right? Like, I don't want to be the first person to peek my head out and get shot. I would much rather have people push me and let me peek shot them and go back into cover. 
So I'm kind of waiting for him to make a mistake. I think he hears me on the roof. He just grabbed a crown, and now he's creeping in here. I can hear his footsteps. He has a high stick accelerant shotgun. So I don't want to like just go in there all willy-nilly. What you'll notice right here about this fight is I come down here, right? And I know he's sneaking around. So I'm being quiet. I'm being quiet. And now I'm just going to go in loud, but I'm not going to enter. I'm going to try to get him to make a mistake. I'm going to swing that door open and hopefully he's like freaks out and does something stupid. But see how I don't enter? I'm just hitting the door open. And he was behind the door, which is crazy. He gets hit, hit away. That gives us a nice easy shot for 140. I'm not walking in that room because I don't want to give him free damage. I'm going to play these windows, see if I can get a window shot on him. He closes the door, now I'm going to go in and just finish him off. I know that I just have to hit one more good shot, and so that's kind of what I'm focused on. We get the nice crown. Only one player left. Alright, so I'm going to break open the ceiling here because what I want to do is not is give myself options for if I get in this fight. I don't want to like get stuck in a room here or stuck coming out of the door. I have no idea how good this player is. I'd rather have options of where I can move that he's not aware of. So if I can crack open that ceiling and give myself an option of like taking high ground with a head glitch, then I'm going to do that. But he just rotated pretty quick, so I didn't have time to finish opening that ceiling. So he's coming through that door. Now I'm going to rotate through this door and use a right shoulder peek on him. Hit him for a nice 86 here. We're gonna clamber and just get high ground. It's the last last fight of the game, 1v1. I just wanna win this. I'm watching him, oddly breaking this. And it's a good chance that was an AI. <laughs> but either way, like we didn't give him any chances to shoot me. Uh, we just played it, you know, fairly well. Just playing it safe, using good cover, using good movement. And just, you know, like even right here, I'm like watching his movements. I'm not going to push up. I'm just basically reacting to whatever he does. I have the advantage because he's got to come out of the house at some point. Um, or at least I'd like him to. And then, yeah. Once I saw him breaking that, I, I had a feeling that it was probably an AI. So that was it. I hope that was helpful. Again, <laughs> to me, this stuff just, uh, you know, comes naturally because I played so much or I've played so many first person shooters. I don't know if it's helpful. If it was helpful, please leave a like on the video that tells me that, you know, you want to see more of this and, uh, you found it helpful. And also, if you want to see more content like this and you have not subscribed, hit that sub button, hit the notification bell so you get alerts when I post videos. If you have not watched my content, I highly recommend checking out my essential playlist. It's like, I think it's Zero Build Essentials. It's pinned on my channel. It has my best content for Zero Build, best fundamentals. It's going to teach you a lot very quickly. Uh, so I highly recommend that if you have not watched that. And uh, thank you all so much for sticking through this video. I know it's a long one. Um, and leave a comment if you have any questions. I respond to every single question that my viewers leave me. Uh, I'm gonna just keep trying to reply to every single comment and try to provide as much value to you guys as possible. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day. Shinobi out.